can start. Sir, yeah. Can I little down? Like this? Mm. Okay. Lock. Okay. Ready, sir? You can start. Yep. You can start. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Wa hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana. Innaka antal alimul hakim. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima'allamtana. Warzuqna fahma. And welcome back to our program, My American Jihad with me, Imam Shamsi Ali. I would like to continue our discussion on how to prepare a future generation here in America. And once again, this is truly one of, one of the most important jihad for Muslim in America, to ensure our future generation to make sure that they will remain believing in Allah, believing in the Rasulullah Sallallahu following the Quran, following the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what our jihad is all about. And so tonight, today, I'm going to talk about one of the most important in that process. And I think many parents fail to understand that this particular issue is crucial important for us to prepare future generation and that issue is marriage itself one of the dilemma that we are facing here as a community in America that it is truly difficult to make sure that our young generation get an easy way for them to marry or to have their own family. And there are many reasons behind that. But one of the difficult and challenging reason or cause to that is about sometime a gap between cultural view of life and religious understanding of the parents. There are some parents who are confused in differentiating between what is religion and what is culture. And so oftentimes we try to engage in this subject or in this topic rather than talking about marriage from Islamic perspective. Many parents take this into a cultural view. And so the issue then has become that many young generations face tremendous challenge because of that cultural view of the religion. Let me just give you one example of a long time ago, and it's a real example, a real thing happened here in America. There was a brother, happened to be a convert, a brother who embraced Islam. He got to know a girl, happened to be somewhere from a Muslim land and they got to know one another the girl knows the boy and the boy knows the girl and you can say that they fall in love so out of a good intention 
the boy came to the father of that girl to propose because as a comfort normally he is very careful about his teaching he has a strong commitment to follow the teaching of Islam but the boy is um, from his Hispanic background a Muslim alhamdulillah convert and the father strongly rejected him and the reason that the father mentioned is about unfortunately a wrong generaliz generalization about certain people you say that Hispanic people are nothing but music and alcohol you know, and this brother is already converted to Islam but the father still has that mentality still has that mindset looks like every single person belongs to this community belongs to that background must be a bad person and that is because a misunderstanding so once again coming back to the issue one of the most difficult and challenging for our generation in terms of marriage is about finding a good spouse and so let's take this as our responsibility it is not our young's responsibilities it is parents responsibilities not only parents responsibility it is our communal this is our community responsibility to make sure that our young generation can find good righteous appropriate spouse for them but let me go to the marriage itself marriage islam is such an important topic it is one of the most fundamental issues mentioned in the quran and the sunnah there are many many ayat of the holy quran talk about family and that's because we know that family is the foundation of our public and communal life and therefore the holy quran talk about the process of building a family from the beginning that someone is looking a possible spouse until the marriage itself until how they get children until how they raise their children and so on and so forth so one of the most important things mentioned in the quran and in details there is there is you know naturally you can find that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about it in details even when something happened between husband and wife that they have to separate or divorce the Quran talks about it and so nothing is left when it comes to the issue of family so the whole Quran takes the issue of marriage as one of the most important subject because marriage truly is number one is the oldest and possibly the most most important institution in human's life why i call it the oldest institution because it's, if you may remember that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created adam alayhi salatu wasalam adam was placed in paradise with his wife at that time in the, in the beginning allah did not create his wife hawa and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and of course this is wisdom that mankind must you know grow and there is a sense of continuity in generations so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then created Hawa Eve alayhi salatu wasalam and since then the institution of marriage have been institutionalized in Islam in other words that is the oldest institution before you talk about education institutions or economic institutions or political institution even state institution you're talking about nation or country the holy quran first talk about family institution and the oldest part of that family institution is about marriage itself the marriage of adam alayhi salatu wassalam to hawa alayhi salatu wassalam marriage also is so important because it is the sunnatullah fil kawn it is the law of Allah in his creation that every single things 
is created in pair, in spouse, as a male and female. Even when we talk about animal kingdom, male and female. When we talk about vegetational kingdom, as a male and female. You know that when you are a farmer of, let's say, dates, for example, and how you arrange that marriage between the male and the female form of that palm or date. And so again, this is the sunnatullah. This is the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the natural law, if you may say. This is the natural law that everyone is, is, is created on that sense. And the attraction, the attraction of both sides to one another is a natural thing in human's life. When a boy is attracted to the man, a woman, and when a, a woman is attracted to the man, that's what the nature is. There's a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creation. This is number two, why it is so important. Number three, marriage in Islam is so important because that is the very natural way to obtain peace, tranquility, joy, happiness in life. And therefore the Holy Quran, for example, you know, talk about this clearly. Women ayatihi and khalaqalakum min anfusikum azwaja li taskunu ilayha wa ya'la baynakum mawaddatan wa rahma. And among the signs of Allah is this that He created for you spouses. Allah created male for the female and Allah created female for the male. For what? لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So that if you're going to have mutual attraction, you feel, you, you feel that sense of attraction. A girl is attracted to the boy and a boy is attracted to the girl. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So they can feel tranquility. So they can obtain peace. In other words, if we want to obtain real peace in life, one of the important ways, one of the, the, the most important institution for it, in order to have peace, tranquility, joy, and happiness in life, is through marriage institution. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And Allah created love and mercy among you. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala underlined in the Holy Quran. Finally, why marriage is so important? Because through marriage, human beings plan the real future. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَالْتَنْذُرْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ Each soul shall see what he or she is going to do tomorrow. And it means that every one of us must prepare him or herself to gain and obtain a better future. But for us Muslims, Future is not only a temporary one. It is not only one year to come or ten years to come or maybe one century to come. The most important future for us is about Akhirah. It's about Akhirah. And therefore, marriage basically in Islam is one of the most important ways for each one of us to prepare that real future, the happy future. The dua of Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيُنْ وَجِعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا رَبَّنَا جِعَلْنَا مُقِيمِ الصَّلَاةِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَاتِنَا رَبَّنَا وَتَقَبَّلْ دُعَاءَ You know, all these are basically dua. How should we prepare our generations so we can have a bright future, shining future? And certainly, for us Muslims who believe in the last day, in the day after Akhir, in the day after life, it means that our future is not only here. Not only to become a good businessman or politician or be back in popular people in any field of life, but more importantly, inshallah ta'ala, through preparation, through our generation, by making sure that we marry accordingly to according to the teaching of Islam, we are preparing the best future. Not only here in this dunya, but more importantly in Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. So again, coming back in conclusion, one of the most important ways to prepare our future generation in America is making sure that our youngs, male or female, our sons or daughters can get married properly. They will find a good spouse, 
and they will marry inshallah and they will build their own family life may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us and strengthen our faith aqulu qali hadha wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh